with that, we'll welcome in head coach Scott Sandlin of the University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs and ask for an opening statement, coach. Uh, just good to be here. Uh, guys are excited to play tomorrow and looking forward to uh, you know, game at three against Michigan. All right. Thank you, coach. This time we'll open it up for questions. Uh, again, we ask that you utilize the raise hand feature. I'll call on you uh, before your first question, too. Please state your name and affiliation, and we, we thank you. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, Scott, we've talked in, in past tournament runs about, um, and your staff has always credited you for this, having a good feel for, for the team. And, and I know sometimes you've said you've had better feels that, that others, depending on the year, even in these tournament runs. I'm wondering, how would you describe the feel for this team this year going into the tournament? Uh, good. You know what? I mean, hey, listen, we've got we've got guys that uh, you know they know what it takes. Doesn't doesn't guarantee anything, but um, I think we we played some pretty good hockey, and sometimes the results don't always show that. But our guys know that, and they know it's 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 kind of a new new season. This is kind of the next step, right? You uh, you know, the whole year is a process, and you learn, and you learn more about your team, and you know this is what it comes down to: these one game shots. You know, you got to try and play your best to. To, to, to advance and you know right now I like our guys where they're at mentally and I thought we had a good day today on the ice and uh, you know but tomorrow is a different story you got to play the game and obviously when you get to this point you're playing a lot of really good teams and we're going to see one tomorrow so guys are excited about the opportunity and uh, hopefully we can we can advance. Josh Vina go ahead. Hi Josh Vina Shaw called Chalky News. Um, Stupid question, but I have to ask. Um, so did, is everyone good to go? Did everyone clear COVID protocols? Yes, okay. No, we've, we've had three tests uh, before we practiced today because we, we, we did another one. So, so far we're good. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. So everyone's good. Thank you. Matt, go ahead. Scott, looking back at, at last, runs here and it's been brought up by a couple of people um you know unsung heroes uh captains have really stepped up at this time of year for your program whether it was um parker and on the run to buffalo and carson coolman um in in saint paul could you see that coming fr from those guys like can you go into this tournament and say all right here here's the guy i know we're gonna have to to lean on or is that unsung hero sometimes come out of nowhere for you uh I think unsung heroes are, are different and, you know, I, I, I would say like Parker, right. And, and some of those in Carson, right. They're, they were captains of our team. They were leaders for a reason. Right. And they just played their best hockey at that time. And, you know, again, when, when you're a leader of a team, guys look up to that and, and they set that example and, you know, everyone kind of followed. So, um, and sometimes you have the guys that are the unsuspecting guys, like, and for example, Billy Exel scored some big goals for us. Right. You know, and Billy, doesn't get a lot, didn't get a lot of attention, um, but he was a key part of our team, a big penalty killer for us. And, and those types of guys that, you know, you're always looking for your, you know, your big guys or your guys that you, you know, probably get a little bit more of the attention, but it's always some guys, you know, that have that opportunity to, to make a name for themselves or step up at this time of the year. And, um, you know, we've had that in the past, so to speak. And, and I don't think it's any different for any other team that there's always going to be maybe somebody like that, that does that in this tournament. So, I'm hoping that it happens. I'm hoping that our our guys that we're relying on, uh, you know, can can play their best and and be the con the key contributors. But hopefully, there's a guy or two that can score a big goal or have a good you know good game or games uh, moving forward. Josh Vina, go ahead. So your team obviously has a lot of um, NCAA tournament experience, but this year is so different than anything else, obviously. So how do you think that sort of factors in? Because you have been there, you have done it, but you also haven't in this specific. It's been a long time since we have, right? You know, and, and again, it is kind of like starting new, but I, but I think too, um, you know, and I was saying this the other day is, is sometimes you get here and, and, you know, you don't come two days early. It's it's a long day and, and sometimes it's it's not so much the games it's as it is some of the stuff leading up to the games, whether it's interviews, um, whether it's the media stuff, whether, you know, you, you practice and sometimes you're stuck at the rink for a long time on, on certain days, especially, 
you know, not necessarily just at the regional, but, you know, when you get to the frozen four and sometimes when you, when you go through that stuff, um, you know, you know how to deal with some of that off, off the rink stuff, right? The game stuff, you know what, I think it's every year, um, the games take on their own shape, right? And it's nice to have guys that have, have been in big games, um, but there's a lot of players, not just in the NCAA, you know, guys in junior hockey that have played big games, but I, I do think it helps. I, I think it doesn't guarantee anything, but I do think it helps. And I think, uh, you know, there's maybe a little bit more of that understanding of, of what it's about and what it takes to get to the finish line. So, and they've also gone through games where they know, you know, the ups and downs of the games at, at this time, you know, you're, I think everyone at this time of the year wants to play, you know, their best hockey. And, and sometimes that's hard to do because of your opponent and you got to live with the, the momentum swings, the ups and downs, and you just got to stay with the game. And I think that's probably the biggest thing our guys have learned. And, and I think, uh, you know, just having that, that demeanor uh, to deal with that stuff um, and having been in those situations before for some of these guys, that comes back pretty quickly, right? Again, like nothing guarantees anything, but it does help. Sam, go ahead. Scott, on the top of, topic of experience, uh, what have you seen from this Michigan team that that makes them so explosive? And yet, the I mean, they're mostly a, a completely uh, a complete team of just just youngsters and young guys as compared to you guys. Uh, talent. Uh, those kids are talented. Um, doesn't I don't I don't look at age, Sam. I mean, a good hockey player is a good hockey player, and they've got some really good players. Um, you know, they've got some guys that can, you know make plays with the puck. They've got really good poise. They've got good hockey instincts. Um, they can play the game with pace. Um, you know, I know, I know their young guys are getting a lot of attention, but they've got some older guys there too, that can, that can make a difference too. And sometimes that gets overshadowed a little bit by, by some of their younger players that have had great years. And, and there's a reason for that, but they've got a pretty solid team. You know, they're, they're, but they're led by some of those guys and they're dangerous, right? They're difference makers. They can make a difference in a game. And, um, you know, to see those guys come into college hockey and not all of them are young, young players. You know, there's some like Johnson, you know, they're younger, but, you know, he, he put up great numbers in, in, in the BC Junior League. And, you know, he's a very talented player, but um, they're and they play well together. Right. Um, some of those guys they are getting opportunities. They're, they're good on the power play. Uh, a couple of them play together. So um, it's talent. It's talent. It's hockey IQ. And and they have fit right in there. And, you know, they can play with pace, they can play the finesse game. So, uh, you know, it's fun to see those players. We need those players in college hockey, right? We need those players in college hockey. And, you know, we're going to see firsthand tomorrow, you know, tape is tape, you know, you get a little bit different when you get on the rink, but, you know, we'll know who they are and we'll, we'll try and do the best job we can to, you know, to defend them and, and, and make them play, you know, the way we want them to play. All right, anything else for Coach Sandlin? All right. Thank you, coach. Yep. Yeah, thanks. All right. Please be joined now by Minnesota Luth captain uh, Noah Cates. We'll open up the questions for Noah. Matt, you want to lead us off? No, I was. Uh talking to some of the seniors on the podcast this week and um, coach kind of brought it up uh, in the postseason, being able to handle the the ups and downs um, of just a game, not just of a, a day or the entire term, the ups and downs. I'm wondering, they brought up that Western Michigan game as being a good example of something that told them that you guys are ready for the postseason. Can you kind of maybe go back to that game, break it down. And, and what about that game? Um, Maybe you feel prepared you guys uh, the most for the postseason, whether it was a refresher of, of just what's to come. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think we needed that game. Uh, late goal going into the third, uh, had us down one. Uh, I mean, we stuck with it. We, we weren't nervous going into, uh, into the dressing room and for that third period. And we got a couple of good goals, a couple of good uh, uh, kills. And that was huge for us. And just kind of that uh, momentum or swagger that we can come back a little bit. And then obviously kind of sucked uh, having a late goal against, but you know, we went to that overtime uh, with a fresh slate and we got it done. So uh, it's huge for us, especially not having any any playoff games last year, that knowing that we can come back or knowing that we can stick with those games and uh, find find our way through it. We'll go to Mike Grimm. 
No, how how eager are you just to get out there having missed last year with with how everything ended and, and knowing what experience this group has? I mean, how how what's the anticipation level like for you and the, your teammates? Yeah, we're obviously really excited. Uh, last year, you know, for everyone uh, was kind of a drag, but, uh, you know, we're the last team to, to do this. So we got that swagger and we got that that experience and everything. So we're, we're excited to get back into it and play tourney hockey. We'll go to Sam next. Noah, how much does that big game experience kind of factor in to something like that, especially going up against a, a Michigan team that, uh, you know, most of their key contributors are uh, younger players? Yeah, that experience is huge for us. Uh, we've been talking about that, how we need to use that to our advantage. And like you said, they have a lot of young guys, but they obviously have a ton of skills. So um, we got to just use our experience to wear them down, play our game and stick with these games because, you know, kind of like that Western game, you have to stick with it and there's no easy games and we just got to play our play our game for 60 minutes. Mike, did you have one more? Yeah, just uh, if you could just know, give us a, a what, what your thoughts on Michigan? What do you see when you watch them on film? Yeah, a ton of skill, a ton of speed. So uh, we just kind of kind of stay above them, be be good structurally uh, in all three zones and make them go through through five guys or 200 feet. And that'll be that'll be tough for them. Uh, I think a big thing is kind of frustrating them and not getting frustrated uh, and just sticking with the game, uh, getting pucks low. Uh, chipping it behind them and just take making little hits, making little bumps that'll that'll just knock them off their speed or kind of frustrate them. Matt, go ahead. Noah, can you compare how how this regional experience compares to your first one there in in Allentown with with the COVID protocols and and everything in place? Is is there a familiar feel now that you're here doing interviews and and practicing and such, or or does this feel a little different this year compared to past years? Uh, definitely a little different, uh, different seed, different testing protocols and everything like that, but uh, it's still a tourney. You got uh, logos everywhere. Uh, it's just a fun time of the year with all the NCAA stuff and uh, just how professional it is. So we're obviously really excited. And uh, like I said, we've been here before and we just got to use that to our advantage that we've, we've won these games before. All right. Anything else for Noah? <clears throat> Perfect. Thanks, Noah. Thank you.